So we've talked about what to do when we are multiplying monomials. What do we do with the exponents and the bases are the same? Add. Add, okay. And then we talked about what we do when we divide monomials and the bases are the same. We the exponents, okay. So today we're going to talk about what do we do when we have an exponent to the exponent. So a power to a power. What are we going to do then? So that's our, our objective today is to understand... how to raise a power to a power. So that's an exponent to an exponent. Okay. And there will be a lot of combination of things that we've done um, in a problem. Now that we have three rules under our belt, we can put them together in various ways, okay? So this actually comes out of its own lesson, finally. This is lesson 5-2 in the textbook, so feel free to read that. So let's do an example, uh, just like we'd started off before. Let's stick with our good friend um, 8. Let's make him cubed, and let's raise him to the fourth power. Okay, so now we got to understand what does that mean. Can anyone tell me what I would write that means 8 cubed to the 4th power? Brian? You multiply the exponents? Okay, hold on, that's not what I said. What does it mean? Not what do I do, what's a rule, what does it mean? Okay, baby steps, Luke. Um, it's 8 to the 3rd 4 times. So we have 8 cubed times 8 cubed times 8 cubed times 8 cubed. Now, this links back to the rule we talked about on uh, Friday, that this is just a multiplication problem. So what do I do with exponents when I multiply? Add. I just add them. So I have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. But uh, Top Gun Lee over there already <laughs> jumped the gun, and he says, hey, I already know how to use a rule. Okay, And so tell us again what you realize the rule would be if you're raising a power to a power. Okay. So what he noticed is, hey, you know what? If I just took 3 and multiplied it by 4, I would get the same answer. Okay. So that's going to be our rule. When raising a monomial with an exponent, monomial, And by the way, exponent and power are used somewhat interchangeably. When raising a monomial with an exponent to a power, which again means exponent, multiply the exponents. So let's go back and box a couple words. Uh, raising a monomial to a power, we're going to multiply the exponents. Okay? So when raising a monomial with an exponent to a power slash exponent, we're going to multiply the exponent. So let's do... Um, just a couple of those real briefly, and then we'll talk about the what if. Let's add on to it. What do we do then? All right, so let's go. Uh, everybody good? Can I move? Okay. So let's just do some simplify. And again, simplify means do all the math you can do until there's nothing left to be done. If you have an exponent that's 5 or less, you actually have to give me the answer, numerical answer. Don't leave it with exponents. If you get a negative exponent, you have to make it a positive exponent. All of that's wrapped up into those simple directions, simplify. So let's take a number base this time and raise it to the fifth power. So again, what I'm going to show black is what I need to see, and then the other color is what your brain's doing. So the rule would be, I have 6 squared, and it shows up 5 times. That's going to give me 6 to the 10th power. Now, I would never in a million years expect you to tell me what 6 to the 10th power is on a test or on your homework. 
It's a lot of work. Okay, that's it. All right, let's do another one. What if I have more than a base? What do you think the answer would be on this one? I'm taking multiple bases and I'm cubing them. Okay. What do you think, Connor? X squared Okay, exactly. What is actually happening, you can still see the multiplication happening, is the each of those variables has an exponent of one. If you can't see it, it's one. So you're going to multiply by three on the X, and you're going to multiply by three on the Y, and that gives you the X cubed Y cubed. Okay? Easy. But we're not going to stop there. What if we throw in a coefficient? So what if we have this problem? 2x squared y cubed, and I want to cube that. Now I know what to do with the exponents, but I'm a little fuzzy about what to do with the coefficients. So what do you suggest I do there, Justin? You multiply 2 by 2 by 2. Okay, so... So you're basically not multiplying it by 2 by 2 by 2. You're actually taking the exponent, 3, and then you're expanding out what 2 cubed means, OK? So let me show you in writing what that looks like. Because you are raising, you are multiplying exponents even on the 2. The 2 has an exponent, 1. So I can raise him to the third power by multiplying 1 times 3. And then I just do that, oops, sorry, that should be an x. I just do that for the rest of them, 2 times 3 on the x. On the y, it's 3 times 3. So the answer to that one would be 2 cubed, oh, sorry, x to the 6th, y to the ninth. And I'm going to say there's actually one more thing to be done. But I had to show you that piece because I had to show you what I got when I raise to the third power. Okay, what's the next step, Josh? Solve the two cubed. Yeah, you gotta tell me what two cubed is. And Josh, what is two cubed? Eight. Yeah. Remember how we talked about memorizing at least through ten cubed? Those answers should just come right off without you having to think about it or multiplying it out. So there's your final answer. So let's write down what we did for that. So when the monomial has coefficients, bless you, or more than one variable base, raise each to the power slash exponent. on the outside. So again, what you're doing is you're multiplying each exponent of the monomial by the exponent outside the monomial. Does that make sense? I'm hearing dead silence. Uh-oh. Okay, so let's put into play a little bit more what these look like. Okay, everybody good? Yep. Yeah. Jocelyn says yes, so we move on, right? So number five, or let's see, I think we're on number four, aren't we? Directions are still under the root of simplify. So we're going to get a little bit crazy right out the gate. So we have negative 3 fourths, a cubed, b to the fifth, and I want to square that. Okay. So th again, I'm going to do this bite-sized pieces so you can see it all. When you're doing this on your homework, you may not need to do all the bite-sized pieces. And I'm going to shift and I'm going to do my work vertically, which is always a better way so I can catch my errors. So everything is going to get raised to the second power. The negative 3 fourths, the a cubed, the b to the fifth. 
But the complication is, how do I square the fraction? I just square each part of it. So I'm going to have negative 3 squared, 4 squared. Now I can already deal with the math over here. 3 times 2 is 6. Most common error, you tell me it's 5. I don't know why. I do the same dopey thing. Got to watch out for that. And 5 times 2 is 10. Okay. Now, negative squared, so two negatives make a positive. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. A to the 6, B to the 10th. Oops, actually, let me redo that one in black, because that's your final answer. And actually, to be honest with you, this one should also be in black. Okay. Now, some people may do raising the uh, fraction all at one time. Just be cautious if you find yourself making mistakes. So this is your final answer. The other thing I want to show is that there's a second way to write this answer. If you want to write it instead of the coefficient as a fraction, you can write the whole answer as a fraction. And it would look like 9a to the 6b to the 10th all over 16. So the choice is kind of yours what to do. Justin. Wait, um, for the negative b squared, why do you uh, put it as negative squared to get positive 9? Why do you uh, because I ha there's a negative to that fraction, and so that negative has to get attached to one of the parts. And I always attach to the numerator because then I pay attention to it. If it's in the denominator, for some reason, I tend to just gloss over it. So I always put it in my numerator. Okay. All right. Let's really kick it up. We're going to do some combination problems. These are going to be more challenging, more things to think about. Because we're not just going to raise... Oops, to a power. So we have negative times 3x cubed y that I'm in a square times negative x y to the fourth that I'm going to cube. So if you notice, I've got three monomials that are being multiplied. Two of them are being raised to a power. So what needs to prevail in how I solve this is order of operations, which says take care of anything in a grouping symbol first. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do inside the grouping symbols. Next, it says you have to deal with exponents. So that's my next job. So I'm going to get negative, and I'm going to take that negative that's in front and let him be what he really is, which is negative 1. I'm going to use brackets here. I'm going to square the 3. I'm going to square the x cubed by multiplying exponents. I'm going to square the y by multiplying the exponents. Over here, dear Lord, can I get it all in? I'm going to take the coefficient, negative 1, and cube it. I'm going to cube the x, and I'm going to cube the y to the fourth. So can you? that's kind of off of there. It should say 4 times 3 on your y. It looks like the 3 is over the y. That's weird. Sorry, that's sloppy math. Let's see if I can get him a little bit closer. There. Okay. Now there's a lot of things going on, but I want to show this is a mandatory. What did I get after I did all of that? So I have negative 1. 3 squared is 9. 3 times 2 is 6 on my x. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 1 cubed. I'm going to have three negatives. That's odd amount of negatives. And so then that's going to give me still a negative 1. And then I have x cubed, y to the 12th. So now I've dealt with the exponent step. Now I'm going to do multiplication or division. Here I have multiplication. So now the rules shift. And what am I going to do with the exponents on the like basis? I'm going to add them. What am I going to do with the coefficients? Multiply them. Maddie. What does it say for your green, for your green equation at the top? What's the second half of the equation say? It says negative 1 cubed times x to the 1 times 3 power times y to the 4 times 3 power. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to pull out all my coefficients. I have a negative 1, I have a 9, I have a negative 1. And remember, I do the math that's in the problem with my coefficients. So I'm just going to multiply them. On my exponents, though, of like bases, I'm going to add. So 6 plus 3 on the x's, 2 plus 12 on the y's. 
Two negatives make a positive, and I get a positive 9. 6 plus 3 is 9. 2 plus 12 is 14. And there's my final answer. So here's where it gets tricky. Is It's not just in isolation anymore, and we have to remember all the rules that we've learned, not only this year, but in past years, dealing with these similar kind of ideas. All right, so here we go. Next, um, here's another combo problem. I have the quantity 4a squared cubed, and I want to add to it the quantity negative 2a cubed squared. So again, I have more than one operation going on. I have exponents and I have additions. So order of operation says you have to take care of the exponents first. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take the 4, I'm going to cube it, and then to cube the a squared, I multiply the exponents. And then on this guy, I'm going to take the negative 2 and square him, and then I'm going to square the a cubed by multiplying the exponents. So the result of doing that, I actually do have to come out with some numbers. And 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. So I get 64 a to the 6. Negative twice is going to be a positive, and 2 squared is going to be 4. 3 times 2 is 6. So now I'm at 64a to the 6 plus 4a to the 6. What could I do now? Amanda. Yeah. What allows me to add the coefficients but not change the rest of it? Okay. So what we have going on here is we have like terms. And like terms are same variable. Same exponent. So basically this is the distributive property. And the distributive property says factor out what they have in common. Well, what they have in common is a to the 6. What's left behind are their coefficients. So we have 64 plus 4 and we get 68a to the 6. So again, what you see in black is what I need to see. What you see in blue is what I call a brain step. You don't have to show those steps. All right, Ooh, here comes the doozy. Got to have a doozy. 2x squared y to the 4th plus negative 3x to the 4th y squared squared plus... 2x squared, y, all to the fourth power, negative 3x to the fourth, y squared, squared, plus negative 5x squared, y cubed, times x, y squared. We're raising to powers, we're multiplying, and we're hoping to find some like terms that we can combine. Okay, the one thing I don't have... Division. Sorry. All right. So here we go. Yeah, that I could do that to you. Let Let's mess with you. Yep. Hello. This is called advanced eighth grade math. So we're going to do advanced problems. Seriously. <laughs> Absolutely seriously. So I'm just going through the motions, raising everything to the power that it's on the outside. And then this guy at the end, really, he just has to wait a little bit before he gets to get included. Poor bugger. So let's see what we get. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So we get 16. x to the 2 times 4 is 8. y, 1 times 4 is 4. Plus negative 3 squared is a 9. We get 8 on the x, we get 4 on the y. Hey, I see some like terms already, but we're not done yet. Here, ooh, 25 times 5, 3 negatives is going to give me a negative 125. x to the 6, y cubed. And I still have that x, y squared tacked on the end. Now, here's the beautiful thing. Because these are like terms, 
I can combine the coefficients. So I can do that right now, even though the rest of the problem isn't done. So that gives me 25 x to the eighth, y to the fourth. And now what I have to do on this side is finish up the problem. So I take my coefficients, negative 1, 25, and 1, multiply them. I'm going to add my x's. Oops. I'm going to add my y's. So the outcome of that is the 25 x to the eighth, y to the fourth. Oops, no, it's going to be a minus. Minus 125 x to the seventh, y to the fifth. And when I'm looking for like terms, um, I kind of fall flat. Yes, they have x's and y's, but they don't have the same exponents. So actually, I'm done. I can't do anything more than this. And that's how the problem ends. Can't do anything more because you have to have same exact exponent on each of those variables. So I needed an 8 on the x, I needed a 4 on the y, and I don't have that. Okay? All right, let's do a couple of just little itty bitties. We good? We good? No. Itty bitties. Uh, 4 to the negative first power to the negative second power. So this is back to basics, but again, we just have to watch our signs. So what we're doing here is taking our 4, we're taking our negative 1 and multiplying it by negative 2. That gives me temporarily a positive 2 for the exponent, and then I need to finish out that answer, and I get 16. So we've got to remember all of our rules. That's the key thing on this. All right, let's throw in a, a division one. And I'm going to show you, this is, you had a question like this on the homework. Except for this one kicks it up another notch. Okay. So uh, notice on this one, I've got multiplication, I got division, I've got raising to power, I've got positives, I got negatives, I got it all. So here's how I would handle the inside. 3 plus negative 2 minus 2. The negative 2 is from the top. The subtracting the denominator is the second minus 2. Okay, And I'm going to raise that whole thing to the negative second power. So first I've got to see what that gives me. So that gives me, let's see, 3 and negative 2 is 1. 1 take away 2 is negative 1. So I get 8 to the negative first power times the negative second power. Now it just looks like number 9, right? I'm going to shift over here. And number 9 said, we're going to just multiply those exponents. So a negative 1 times a negative 2. And that gives me a positive 2. And 8 squared is 64. Okay. So those are variations that you may see on your homework tonight. Uh, which, by the way, I will get to you in a second. Okay, good luck with this.